Well, it seems my home nation of Canada, the CBC, is now spreading the information of what's going on with Sweet Baby Inc. They're the ones that are putting out a new article that's come out over the last few hours here about how Sweet Baby Inc. is accused of political agendas. Developers call it a misinformed hate campaign. Now, before I fully get into the video, subscribe to the channel, come back again, hit the notification bell, and take a look at what is going on with Sweet Baby Inc. This is an ongoing battle right now with the online space being the one that's the battleground. It's the one where the fight is happening. Why a Montreal video game consulting studio is at the center of an online anti-diversity storm. Now, first off, I, I, I will clear this up a little bit here. There is no problem with diversity in video games or in uh, fandoms or anything like that. The problem is, is when it becomes forced, when it becomes tokenization of diversity. The diversity just for a few dollars and a few pats on the back because of it. And that's the issue that a lot of gamers have taken the stance here. Secondly, um, developers calling this a misinformed hate campaign. There is no campaign here. This is many, many different gamers coming together and saying, listen, we're sick and tired of you guys making absolute trash video games. If you look at Forspoken, the game did so bad, it shuttered the doors of the company that made the game because of these political agendas. It wasn't Sweet Baby Inc. that was tied to that, and to that one. That was Black Girl Gamers, another version of a narrative design studio. Um, they weren't originally, but they are now. Kim Belair says she wasn't surprised at the harassing and threatening messages that she and her team have been receiving last fall. Well, if you are not surprised to know, I am a YouTuber and I've received a lot of threatening and uh, harassing comments down below. Please leave a new one today because that is something that I've, I've gone through up and down quite a bit on here on the channel. A lot of them, some of them get saved to a file. Most of them just get deleted. I usually just move on. Sometimes I post them in the Discord so we can all laugh at it. By the way, I have a Discord if you guys want to join it. Um, or, you know, at other times I just let it be and I move on and just delete. And that that's normally what you do online. The de Their details have been enough to shake in them. Been calling harassment is the criticizing of the what they do as a narrative design studio that includes threats of violence suggesting they should off themselves for each other and even graphic photos said Bel Air co CEO and co-founder of Montreal based Sweet Baby Inc a video game consulting company graphic photos that's absolutely okay first off if you're sending graphic photos if you're sending like actual threats don't do that. That's just, that's illegal. They should be following up with the police. I solely say don't do that. But if you look at the firestorm that's online, if you look at the backlash that Sweet Baby Inc. has gotten, that's not what's actually going on. Sweet Baby Inc., their, one, of their, one of their employees, Chris Kindred, sat there and went after a group because they made a, uh, a Steam Curator group that showcased the games that Sweet Baby Inc., worked on the same amount of information could be found on sweet baby Inc.'s own website and all that group was was this company worked on these games we don't recommend you play these games and we don't recommend you play these games based off the way that the sweet baby Inc. operates and has shoehorned in diversity and has terrified marketing and executives and developers at the at the game level when they're trying to change the narrative of these games. That's where this is. Those are those, the terrify part is a direct thing that Kim Belair herself has said in a clip. I have previous videos showing that clip. I'm not going to show it again. Uh, it's not something that's entirely new to us, especially in our marginalized team members who have existed in the industry for quite some time. Yes, 
because they have links back to Feminine Frequency and the old school Gamergate girls. That's why if you follow the trail, you can, you can link them up to everyone else down the line. You see the exact same players that were, were out there with the Gamergate, uh, situation, stuff like that. It, it's absolutely dumbfounding how far this has gone. The entirety of their so-called hate campaign, uh, or harassment campaign, rests in the fact that this is the exact same people grifting again, doing the same thing that had started over 10 years ago at this point. Bel Air's 16 person team has become the center of a new storm of online arguments, conspiracy theories, and harassment as self-described gamers accuse them of pushing a radical left agenda into games they claim players and even developers themselves want no part of. Well, a lot that's coming down the line is a lot of people are talking about how they're pushing a Marxist dogma into these video games. And that's where this is. They're using the whole idea of diversity to push a different style of agenda. Now that's where they're coming up with the conspiracy theories. But when you follow the doctrine and you follow everything else that's going on around there, it's there, you can see they're using their own playbook to go point by point by point. They say they want to take over the games industry. They hate white, straight male gamers, said commentary Ryan Kino in a YouTube video where he was over 300,000 followers. Ryan was actually, they used a clip in a interview that uh, Alyssa McCante did on a podcast called The Current. And, uh, now they're actually naming him. He, they never named him in that clip. They also list that, that, uh, podcast right here, uh, as well. So it's very interesting that now it's been, oh, we know who you were talking about and they've added it into the clip. I have a previous video on that. Some have likened the backlash to Gamergate, a harassment campaign mostly targeting women in the video games industry that began in 2014 that actually uh, resulted in somebody offing themselves because of the, the women that were involved created har a harassment of their own towards that person. So... This is the same thing going on right now. Alyssa McConte is the person that they, they are getting all of this from. This is Jonathan Orr of CBC Radio. Um, so Alyssa went to CBC, went on The Current, and now we have CBC trying to push this forward as a new version of a hate campaign when this is not the case. They, The people that are behind this, Alyssa McConte, uh, Chris Kindred, which is also, which is a Sweet Baby Inc. Uh, um, employee. I've already gone over that. Alyssa McConte is a Kotaku employee. She was the senior editor. Um, they've both asked for mass flagging and reporting of several people, including Grums, AKA Mark Kern of uh, X Blizzard. He used to work on World of Warcraft um, over an April Fool's jo uh, joke and over this Steam Curator Group. They're the ones that have organized this entire harassment campaign in the first place, and everything has come back full circle. So when Kim Belair says they're not surprised they're getting uh, targeted harassment or hate messages, they struck first. They went after the people first. They wanted them reported. They wanted, they, they created this harassment campaign and now they're sitting there from their, their diaper in their, in their crib, in their baby crib without a bottle saying you're, you're harassing us and crying out loud. No, that's not what's happened here. The employees at Sweet Baby Inc. went after people. They, they started harassing other people and then it, then the tables got flipped the backlash came from all of that. So this article, you know, it, it, it's telling things that are going on, but it's not telling the, telling the full side of the story. The online storm has even caught attention of ex-owner Elon Musk. Sweet Baby Inc. is an evil blur bright on the gaming industry. All they do is make games terrible and try to cancel people. Musk posted on X, formerly known as Twitter, on March 16th. They can go, they cannot go broke soon enough. And once again, that was something I had covered. CBC, do better. Come on. 
Come on. Let, tell it like it actually is. Tell tell the story of what's going on. I would be willing to sit there with CBC and actually talk to you guys, but you're probably not going to look me up. You're probably never going to see this video. Uh, and uh, you know what? For those that do see this video, like, share, subscribe, and do all those fun things. I've been your proud Canadian Phoenix. I'm signing off here. Have yourselves a great day.